Hey guys, it's Sarah Bath, and welcome to the 30-minute post-workout static yoga cooldown. You don't need to take off your shoes. You don't even need a mat. Just start in a standing position with your hands together at heart center and take a big breath in and out. Now interlace your fingers and press your palms forward, inside out. Without shrugging, just reach your palms up. Now bend both elbows and pull your left elbow down so your right elbow points up to the ceiling. Keep your forearm behind your head and your chin up, spine tall. You can always take a basic tricep stretch here instead as a modification. And switch sides. Left elbow pointing up or take the tricep stretch. And deepen your breath to create space. Release your arms down by your sides and take a few shoulder rolls, inhaling shoulders up to your ears and exhaling shoulders down your back. For eagle arms, reach your hands forward and cross your right arm underneath your left at the elbows and again at the wrists. The modification here is to take a basic arm across the body stretch instead. Wherever you are, feel free to add some movement, like lifting and lowering your arms or dropping your head side to side. If you find a really good spot, hold there and breathe really deep as if you are breathing directly into the sensation. And gently release. Roll your shoulders and your neck before we switch sides. When you're ready, extend your arms forward and this time cross left under right at the elbows and again at the wrists. Modify if you did on the other side and experiment with movement in your arms, shoulders, and neck. Find what feels best for you and breathe into it. And release. Roll out your neck and shoulders one last time. Now step your feet apart about a yard's distance and bend your knees to hinge from your hips as you slowly forward fold. Once you come all the way down, place your hands on the mat and even the weight out in your feet. Let your head hang heavy.
From here, grab onto your elbows as you sway side to side. Add a chest expansion by interlacing your hands behind your lower back and press your knuckles up to the ceiling. Do your best to roll your shoulders open so you can lengthen the muscles in your chest. Let your deep breath help. Now release your hands and toe heel your feet even wider, maybe four to five feet apart for a wide legged forward fold. Hinge from your hips and let your head hang heavy as you even out the weight in your feet so you can hinge a little deeper. Place your left hand down on the ground directly underneath your face. Then reach your right hand high as you lengthen your spine, tailbone through the crown of your head. And switch sides. Lower your right hand down to replace your left and reach your left hand high. With a long spine, stack your shoulders and deepen your breath. And release. Walk both hands over towards your left foot as you bend your left knee and straighten out your right leg for skandasana. And even if you modify in a side lunge instead of hips down to your heel, keep your chest open and relax as much as you can while your right inner thigh lengthens. Stay low as you switch sides. Walk your hands over to the right and your left leg will straighten out. Keep your left toes flexing back towards your hips and take a couple of deep and slow breaths. And it's okay if your heel is lifting a bit. You can't really see it in the video, but mine's lifting here. I want you to focus instead on the length you're creating in your inner thigh. Make your way back to center. Take your hands to your hips, weight in your heels, and inhale as you rise. Then step your feet together at the top of your space. Inhale, mountain pose, arms up, hands touch. Exhale, forward fold, come all the way down and hang heavy in this fold. Next inhale, take halfway lift, find a flat back. Then exhale, fold and step your left foot back into a low lunge. Wiggle around as much as you'd like to get into your hips and groin. Then lower your back knee down to the mat and just let your head hang heavy as you sink into your hips. Connect your deep breath to the sensation you feel in your hips. As if you were breathing away the tension. Now rise and place your hands on your front thigh as you lift up through your heart. Engage your lower abs so you can lengthen your spine out of your hips. Then reach your arms up to continue that length.
Bring your hands together at heart center and twist to the right. Hook your left elbow outside of your right knee and twist up and back into your right shoulder blade. Deepen your breath within your twist. And you're more than welcome to take a quad opener here instead. Release both hands back down to the mat for Hanumanasana prep. Just shift your hips back as you straighten out your right leg. And as you inhale, lengthen your heart towards your toes. As you exhale, hinge from your hips to round and fold. Inhales lengthen, exhales fold. Next inhale, bend your right knee and walk your hands forward. Curl your back toes under and step forward into a forward fold at the top of your mat. Inhale to lengthen your spine flat back. As you exhale, fold and step your right foot back. Move around a little in your low lunge to warm up your hips in any way that feels right for you. Then lower your back knee down to the mat and with your hands on both sides of your front foot, let your head hang heavy as you sink into your hips. Make your breath so full and so deep that you're able to soften and sink a little deeper with each exhale. From here, take your hands to your front thigh as you lift your chest up. Keep your lower abs pulling in instead of dumping into your hips. And with that control, reach your arms up and breathe into the length you're creating. Bring your hands together at heart center and twist to your left. Hook your elbow outside of your knee. And instead of resting your belly on your thigh, lift up and back into your left shoulder blade so you can invite this twist into your upper body. And take the quad opener on this side if you did on the other. And release both hands back down as you shift your hips back for Hanumanasana prep. If you focus on hinging from your hips first, it'll be easier to target your hamstring. Then you can inhale to lengthen, pull your heart towards your toes, and exhale, hinge, round, and fold. Each inhale lengthening your torso so that with each exhale you may be able to fold that long torso over your leg. And to come out, bend your left knee and walk your hands forward. Then step to the top of your mat in a deep forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, fold and step back into downward facing dog. And of course, you can hit chaturanga and up dog on the way there if you'd like. From down dog, reach your right leg high and bend your knee to open up your hips. Then take a big breath in to lengthen and straighten. And as you exhale, take half pigeon, right knee to your right wrist. Lay your shin flat and keep your hips square to the top of your mat. You can stay lifted here or surrender down to your forearms or forehead down to the mat. But if you wanna try a different variation, 
take figure four up the wall. Sometimes you can get a deeper stretch up the wall without all the body weight compromising your position. Wherever you are, breathe deep and slow. And with each exhale, just let go, soften, and go a little deeper. Slowly rise. Shift your weight onto your right hip and swing your left leg around and in front of you towards the upper left corner of your mat or where your mat would be. The sole of your right foot is in your left inner thigh and from here, walk your hips out from underneath you so you can hinge from your hips, not your lower back. Slide your left forearm inside of your left shin and reach your right arm up to the ceiling to first open up your chest then reach it overhead as if you were reaching for your left toes, but keep your chest open. Don't worry about touching your toes. Instead, create length through your whole side body without caving your chest. And send your breath into your right middle back about where your right kidney is. Inhaling to create space, exhaling to soften the tension. And slowly rise. Take a quick twist to the right. Then a counter twist to the left. Now plant your hands behind you and place your feet flat on the mat for reverse tabletop. Lift your hips up, press your knees forward and feel a stretch along your chest and shoulders. Then lower your hips back down to the mat and make your way back to downward facing dog. From down dog, reach your left leg high and bend your knee to sink your heel to open your hips. Then inhale to lengthen your left leg, square off your hips, and exhale to bring your left knee to your left wrist for half pigeon. And your shin will only be parallel to the top of your mat if you're really flexible. For now, your shin placement should be in a place where you can keep your hips closed off and square towards the top of your mat. Then you can surrender down or take a figure four up the wall if you did on the other side. And settle into your posture with a few deep breaths.
and gently rise. Shift your weight to the left and swing your right leg around and in front of you towards the upper right corner of your mat. Left foot meets your right inner thigh. And take a moment to move your hips out from underneath you so you can hinge from your hips. Take your right forearm inside of your right thigh and reach your left arm up to the ceiling. Keep your chest open and reach overhead for your toes. Lots of breath. And send that breath into your left middle back about where your left kidney would be. Take your time as you slowly rise and take a gentle twist to the left. And then to the right. Come back to center and plant your hands behind you, feet flat on the mat, and lift up into reverse tabletop. Really lift through your hips and chest. Then lower your hips back down and roll over your ankles to come to lie down on your belly. From your belly, extend your left arm out from your side like a cactus arm. 90 degrees in your armpit and elbow. With your left ear down to the mat, push into your right hand to roll your body onto your left side, opening up your chest and shoulder. Stay here or plant your top foot anywhere behind you or in front of you to help keep your hips stacking open. and send your deep breath into your chest. Slowly lower your hips back down, but keep your right knee bent open so it looks like tree pose on your belly. Then press into your right hand to lift your chest up and thread your left arm underneath so you're lying down on your left shoulder and upper arm. Reach your right arm up to the ceiling and slowly open into a twist. As the top of your right hand falls down towards the floor, allow your right knee to drag back just a little bit. Then breathe into your belly and lower back as you relax your neck and shoulders. To come out, reach your right arm high, then curl up on your left side. De-thread the needle and come back to a neutral position on your belly. To switch sides, first extend your right arm from your side like a cactus arm. Take your right ear down and press into your left hand to roll your body onto your right side. Plant your top foot anywhere in front or behind you to help keep you open and breathe. Relax anything that you don't need.
lower your hips back down and keep your left knee bent open like in tree pose. Then press into your left hand to lift your chest and thread your right arm underneath. For your twist, reach your left arm up to the ceiling and slowly open. Your left knee is keeping your lower back anchored down, but it can totally slide back a bit if it helps you unstack your shoulders. Find what works for you, then bring your focus back to your smooth and deep breath. Lift your left arm, curl up on your right side, and come back to a neutral position on your belly. Then roll over onto your back and find happy baby pose. Grab the inner arches of your feet and spread your ankles open, but keep your lower back flat on the mat so you can lengthen instead of strain. If you want a modification, just grab your knees or shins instead. And when your back is flat, Try rocking a little side to side to massage out your lower back and sacrum area. And when it feels right to you, just pull your shins into your chest for one last big breath in and out. Then release into just one minute in your final Shavasana or legs up the wall. Wherever you are, completely let go and completely relax so your body can digest all that you've just done. When you're ready to come out, just curl up on one side. Then push yourself up to seated and bring your hands together at heart center. Take a moment to thank yourself for committing to your own self-care, to your fitness, and to your yoga practice and I thank you. Namaste. If you want a shorter yoga cool down for your busier days, try my 15 minute static yoga cool down. And if you haven't tried it already, my yoga warm up is a complimentary way to start your fitness routine. And I've got a talking video about how I balance my fitness routine and my yoga practice, in case you're interested. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe for new uploads every Friday and have a wonderful rest of your day.